Would you consider the crimes returned in the indictments last week, those of perjury, obstruction of justice, and conspiracy, to be impeachable of crimes? I do not expect that the House committee will find that the president is guilty of uh, any of these crimes. Your credibility has been severely damaged. Can you repair it? Well, I imagine I'm the only one around who wants to repair it, and uh, I didn't do have anything to do with dis if damaging it. What goes through your mind your critics that compare this current controversy to Watergate? We're not covering up or anything. We are, we are opening up. How do you feel about comparisons by some of your critics of this week's scandals to those that happened under the Nixon administration? You can go ahead and uh, read the history, I think, and, and draw your own conclusions. The president did not bite on those historical comparisons. What does the roundtable think? We are joined by George Will, Katrina Vanden Heuvel, editor and publisher of The Nation, uh, ABC's new chief Washington correspondent, Jeff Zeleny, April Ryan of the Urban Radio Networks, American Urban Radio Networks. Thanks for joining us. And Ron Fournier of National Journal. Thank you all for coming in. So, so George, last week before the hearing, you wrote a column saying you heard echoes of Watergate in the, uh, in the IRS scandal. After the hearings, after the revelations this week, do you still believe that? Uh, sure. In, in this sense, it's the use of the federal machinery to punish enemies of the administration. Let's take a running leap into this. March 2012, the IRS, responding to rumors all over conservative movement and all over Washington that conservative groups were being targeted, assured the Ways and Means Committee this was not true. The commissioner at the time did. Two months later, they know that's not true. Did they come back to the Ways and Means Committee and correct the record? No, they did not. In June 2012, the number two man at Treasury and the Treasury General Counsel are told about the targeting. Did they respond in any way that we know about yet? Did they inform the White House? They, we they don't say know. no. That's why we have divided government. We're going to have hearings and we're going to find out. Then, on March 10th, 10th of this, sorry, May 10th, 10th of this month, Lois Lerner, in an amazingly interesting coincidence, is asked a question at an American Bar Association conference about this. And she says, yes, it's been happening. This just in front of a report that's going to come out from the IRS confirming that. This week, the acting commissioner, Mr. Miller, says the IRS was not corrupt in this. It was just breathtakingly incompetent, delivering what he called horrible customer service, which Another amazing coincidence just happened to fall disproportionately on conservatives. Finally, he said, I do not know whose idea this was, but I do know that these people I do not know did not have political motives. That's where we stand. That's where we stand. But we also know a little bit more than that. And let me bring you this to, to, to Ron Fournier. We do know that, at least on two occasions, higher-ups at the IRS went back to the Cincinnati office and said, brought in out the criteria, this doesn't seem fair. Right. I mean, the, the problem with, with this scandal, and it actually relates to the other ones that we'll talk about later, is, uh, you know, when, when you're in a position of government and saying we're not corrupt, we're just incompetent, that's a bad place to be. And what, 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 Fair summary. What, 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 what unites all these things is it's, it, it undermines the, the credibility of the administration and the president and the competence of government. And this is a time when we have a president who's really trying hard to prove that government can improve our lives, that government can help us move forward, and trying to reverse this decades-long decline in our faith. I, I want to get to that is, question a little bit. Let's stick on the IRS for now. Your response but, to well, George. I, Watergate, seriously, George? I mean, Watergate was a scandal unique in its depths of criminality. You had a president at the heart of the White House directing the subversion of the FBI and other institutions, including the IRS. There is no evidence, and I think the IRS scandal is outrageous. There is investigation underway. The president has fired the acting head. And the key scandal, which you will disagree with, is that we had, after Citizens United, a flood of money coming in, and you had groups which were clearly political and partisan, trying to use this 501c4 categorization to escape political scrutiny. Let us have an investigation, but let, not, let us not call it Watergate, because that demeans our history and the full nature of constitutional crises. I would only say that I brought Watergate into this because abuse of the IRS was Section 1, Article 2 of the Articles of Impeachment of Richard Nixon. But it has been used by the Kennedy administration, by the Nixon administration, but there is no evidence yet that the president or the White House knew of any outside political pressure. And the key scandal is that we must break open and have even-handed standards so that 
people. The Congress and the FEC have failed in their duty because donors, political parties, PACs, these so-called 501c4s, which should be abolished, have not had standards to abide by. And Jeff, by. you certainly saw that's where the two Democrats who are on the committee certainly want to take these investigations going forward. From your reporting, uh, what else do you expect to be uncovered this week, and what, what direction do you expect the Senate Finance Committee to take? I think. The Senate Finance Committee um, is, is getting the first shot at this on Tuesday. And the key person here is Douglas Shulman. Yes, he was a Bush appointee, but he was the head of the IRS. Um, and, and he has some, some questions to answer here. I think we know now. He was the one, just to explain, he was the one who did not divulge to the Congress exactly. that, that this was going on. He says he didn't know right. about it. And a couple things are happening here. Uh, members of the House and the Senate are upset that Congress didn't. Um, that they weren't uh, fully informed, excuse me. Um, but. It's, it's really not the issue of if Congress was informed or not. It's actually what was happening here. But uh, the Senate Finance Committee, I'm told, is still looking for IRS employees, agents, who they're going to bring in and question. That's not going to happen on Tuesday, but that's what we really need here, some of the employees to sort of call out Washington. Right and now it's top down. We need to hear from the bottom, bottom up. up. April, the White House does seem pretty confident in their assertions that there was no communication one way or the other with the IRS. Yes, they do. But you always have to remember with the White House, and everyone here knows this, you have to present this strength and the fact that your, your hands were clear, particularly the president. Even though the White House counsel knew about it a month ago, the president says he found out about it through media reports. But one thing that this administration is trying to do to win the picture on this, and one way that they're trying to win the picture on this, is Friday night they asked the new IRS commissioner to embark on an investigation that will bring back information in 30 days. So they are really standing strong and showing, saying, look, we had nothing to do with this, but we're trying to move this forward and get answers. Ron, that's not enough for the senators we heard today. Calls for special counsel from Senator Portman, from Congressman, uh, Congressman Price saying he's not quite there uh, yet. Do you, do you see this as the next step, or, or are the congressional investigations going to be sufficient? No, we're definitely going to have that congressional investigation. It kind of depends what comes out of that. If there's any, any hint that, uh, if there, I mean, all there has to be is a blind copied email to a deputy political director in the White House. And this thing is really big, maybe even Nixonian big. If after a real thorough investigation, it stopped inside a very incompetent, poorly managed, about to take over health care IRS, then it's just a um, severe problem for you the president's that, government. Yeah, sure, let's, but let's start, as Jeff says, from the bottom up. Let's find out if that group in Iowa that says, a right to life group, says it was told it would get its tax-exempt status if, but only if, it promised not to picket Planned Parenthood. Let's find out if that happened, and if so, who told them that, and where they got the bright idea to do that. A Tennessee group was d said, you will, your entitlement to this status will be contingent upon telling us the names of the high school and college students that you train to participate in politics. I want to find out what Katrina, America you do wonder need, where these questions I, came In from. order to That's have even-handed application of IRS standards, again, the Federal Election Commission, the Congress, we need to have a set of standards because these people in Cincinnati, first of all, they also broadened it to non-Tea Party, non conservative groups, but I think you need to have a set of standards, and our campaign finance system needs to be just torn apart. It's broken. Our democracy is broken, and this is a subset of that. Sure, let us, in, let us have investigations, but scandal is not an agenda, and the Republicans are going to run just inhaling scandal without a sober-minded fact-finding investigation on any of these issues. Now, I think the real issue, which predates this week, and is it a scandal? It's a scandal to some, but we've known about it, is the AP story. Uh -huh. I mean, the fact that this administration picked the baton from Bush and failing to uphold what it promised has had the worst record on press well, freedom. Let's, let's you can't be a situational civil libertarian, George. Listen, the civil, the press freedom record, the transparency record of this administration, this administration has prosecuted more people for leaks, officials, than any others. And I think that is something maybe millions of people in this country don't care because they don't care about Benghazi or the IRS story right now. But that's something that so speaks to the core of democracy and what we stand for. Let me for. take a step back and just explain because it's a good transition exactly what, what happened here. What we found out is that the Justice Department uh, secretly 
was able to seize the phone records of the AP, about 20 different phone lines at the AP, probably involving about 100 reporters in this leak investigation last year, which was trying to get at who divulged the existence of a mole inside al-Qaeda. That's right. So that, that all set right there. Headlines, George, across the country, uh, Justice Department should not have obtained AP's phone records, spying on the Associated Press, those AP subpoenas. Actually, I want to bring this to Ron Fournier because you worked at the Associated Press for about uh, 20 years, 20-something years. Um, years, and you made the point this week that you believe that the leak investigation actually has the potential to do more harm to national security than the initial leak itself. No doubt about it. A couple quick points. First, you heard Dan Pfeiffer early, early use as defense of the IRS. All those Republicans are doing a fishing expedition. Well, how can the administration with a straight face talk about fishing expeditions when that's what they're doing for, against the AP? First point. Why this is a problem? One, it intimidates whistleblowers. Anybody who has information uh, that the, about the government that the government doesn't want out now is chilled. Two, anybody out there watching this show, paying attention to the story, has got to worry about their own records because if DOJ is willing to come after That's the world's right. oldest and largest news organization, knowing that the AP would disseminate this, right? Knowing this would be and a big knowing deal. the Justice Department guidelines say you have to go to the AP first. Willing, right. What are they willing to do to you? What are they willing to do to your mother back in Topeka? Knowing that she doesn't have the power of the Associated Press. This is scary. Three, the reason it is really undermines uh, national security, I have to kind of explain what happened here. The AP, like news organizations have for many decades, when they found out about the story, in one way or another, they got in contact with the CIA. I don't know if the AP went to them or the CIA went to, uh, went to the AP. It's not material. Government said this is dangerous. Please don't put this information out. We need a few days to protect the informant. The AP, as news organizations do, because there's this bond of trust, held off on the story, right? So, the CIA never asked them to kill the story. It's very important to know. For five days, the AP sat on the story. They took care of their asset. They said, the CIA said it's safe to run the story. You can run it. A few minutes, a few hours later, later on the day, they said, wait, wait, actually, we need an extra day because we want to put out a press release tomorrow. They wanted their PR plan to go in place. So now what happens is other news organizations are going to be less trusting of the government when the government says, please don't run and this during story. those negotiations, and that undermines national security. But, you know, but, but Ron is right, but it, it extends worldwide. We are the standard bearer for freedom of the press. And then when you have these rogue nations or nations that are suppressing information, and they'll say, they'll look to the United States saying, oh, well, President Obama is doing that to their press. We can do it, too. And not only that, Ron is absolutely right. If you can start saying, look, we're going to take your logs, our, it's all about relationship. It's all about trust. And if those uh, sources say, hey, I'm not going to do this because in fear of possible uh, investigation or what have you, that's a problem for us to be able to disseminate factual information. And, and, and George, Ron lays out all the, all the reasons why the AP should have been uh, consulted. And I think there's an actual strong case to be made that uh, the White House or the Justice Department could have also gone to a court and, and, and had them adjudicate it uh, as well. On the other hand, this was a very, very serious uh, investigation, a very serious leak that put not only American assets at risk, but could have complicated our national security. Absolutely. Government has a right to some secrets, particularly those involving sources and methods of intelligence gathering. We all understand that. But as you said, the AP was extremely compliant here, in spite of the fact that the government was not following its own protocols tested over time. Now, the administration says, embarrassed, now we need another law. We need a, a shield law. This country has had a shield law since December 15, 1791, when the First Amendment was and ratified. And shield law, in this case, would not have applied to national security concerns. And the problem for all of this, I mean, this is not directly linked to the the Oval Office or the West Wing, perhaps because it would be improper for them to be in discussions with the Department of Justice, as far as we know. But the bigger picture here is this is all we've talked about all week. The president had probably nine months to get his agenda through. And on Congress, in Congress, on Capitol Hill, it's, it's uh, scandal is the only discussion here. So this is a big problem in terms of undermining the trust of and the government. There is, there, there is a related, no there is a related scandal. I mean, we're talking about the AP as we should now, but with a few exceptions in the establishment media, the New York Times being one, where has the coverage been in these last few years when you've seen spying on American Muslim communities, on dissidents, a, a Patriot Act passed through without even much thought. The federal, the FISA Act, which well, allows journalists to be eavesdropped on. With a, so I'm just saying this is something that is very chilling. On the other hand, this is not an apology for the Obama government, but the Republicans have been baying like wolves in the night for more investigation of leaks. Well, so there's a transpartisan ecumenical problem, which we <laughs> must... Wow, it is a sentence. Wow. <laughs> no, there, no, I'm glad you asked that question. Because, Where are the investigations into uh, uh, Muslim communities? The Associated Press 
Press Peace right. Prize winning team did an investigation into profiling here in this city of the Muslim community. That same team, that same team was the one that the administration came to and said, please don't print this. They are overseen by a bureau chief who replaced me named Sally Busby, who oversaw two wars for the Associated Press. These are not folks who this is their first rodeo. That's to right. To parse your one thing you said, the AP is not compliant. The AP is never compliant. The AP is responsible. Well, I would the just administration mean, here has been irresponsible. But, you know, the, 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 to hold denying, us, to the hold The administration it. is denying that this whole investigation is about that story, about the, the Al-Qaeda leak story. It's so, broader than that. Yeah. Yeah. Broader. How about the broad question, George, that Jeff uh, raises? Well, you know, I think you've got a third of the committees in the House now investigating uh, the administration. It seems like the rest of the president's agenda is languishing. You asked in a column this week. What agenda? Well, yes, I mean, in, in, in fact, the president ran a campaign that was designed to defeat Mitt Romney, not give him uh, real momentum going forward. Though, there are those of us who think there's entirely too much trust in government, and this week demonstrated why we think that. And if we drain the reservoir of trust, we'll be better off as a Republican. But is there a risk right. that the Republicans go too far in pushing these? You already heard what we played it in the open, Michelle Bachman raising the specter of impeachment here. It is, uh, that's silly, and it is, it, it's possible to go too far, but Republicans perhaps cannot be blamed for saying a crisis is a terrible thing to waste, and there is a crisis of confidence, and they are the, the political party that exists to say that government is necessary, but always is a danger. Even the National Review had an editorial this week, scandal is no agenda. Now, I would argue that the, uh, the Republican Party is unified by its determination to obstruct President Obama. It's doing a good job. I mean, the, one of the terrible things this past week was to see again how it's obstructing the confirmation of appointees needed to run a functional government. However, I would say that the president, his administration is floundering because they haven't They've allowed weapons of mass distraction to dominate because they haven't found their core agenda for the second term. What is it? Is it immigration reform, which might well have a better chance of passing because of this distraction in Washington? A better chance? Yes, I think because people will be distracted by the scandals, but I think jobs, where's the job creation? Where's the action on guns? These are, these are focuses of an administration that knows what it wants to do in a second term. So I think there's blame well, They failed to, to get around. the gun bill through. I mean, the in president was pushing this. This is his top but agenda. I'm not sure on immigration. I mean, like, speaking of that, that's a big problem on the House. Uh, the Senate thinks it's moving forward, but there is no um, real agenda here, and time is running out. The president had a meeting with some top advisors right after the election, and he said, how much time do I have? And they basically uh, said about a year. Well, it is now almost June. Half of that year is up, and we know what's going to happen in the rest of the year. I mean, all these committees, as you said, a third of the committees are investigating uh, the White House. I could just push back on one thing with all due respect. I don't think it's a good thing, whether you're Republican or Democrat, that the public has lost faith in government. I don't think it's a good time that for the last good thing um, that what is happening in this country is more and more and it's even exacerbated under President Obama before these scandals people are looking outside of government uh, for their their own workarounds around uh, the federal government I, I had to get away from Washington for two days this week and go to Boston <laughs> to talk to Millennials the best and the brightest up in Harvard the best and the brightest in suburban Detroit the best and the brightest in suburban Virginia about the fact that they have a high level of civic engagement the polls show they don't trust government what this means is people like that, the next generation, are, are staying out of government. George, you have 30 seconds to respond. We're just out of time. Big government, the best construction on the IRS scandal is big government is impossible to monitor. That's the lesson of this. Big and government, but, but any government has to be trusted. Any and, and government has to be trusted, but the trust. bigger the government gets, the bigger the distrust ought to be and I've never will under, be. But I've never understood why people who hate government go into government, because we're seeing a intent to dismantle a positive activist government and there are millennials around this country who still see as they face student debt and other factors a need for a politics. positive government that would improve Washington the condition of people's the lives of politics. See the need for this oh my God. God. Yeah. 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 we are out thank you all very much <laughs> Katrina's going to stick around to answer your questions for our web extra check it out at abcnews.com this week